there he is. Hey, Coach. Hey, Coach. Hey. How you doing? Good. How you doing? Well, congratulations yeah. on making it to the finals. Thank you. That was an awesome game. How do you feel about it? Uh, it was a, uh, a beautiful game. You know, really to come out there as the underdog, to come out there with people thinking coach doesn't bring any value to camp and coach isn't a good competitor and coach is a character, to turn that around and to say, you know, guess what, guys, I can play this game. You know, it sucks to lose. I mean, I'm like so um, gutted that I was so close. I made it all the way to the end. So many people thought that I was going to win. You know, so many people on the red carpet say, coach, don't tell anybody, but I really do wish that you would have won and that you deserve to win. Everybody deserves to win, you know. I think on the other hand that I did win because I connected to the audience in a very real way that I haven't in the past. You know, I connect to the people that I play with, I connect with you guys, but the audience doesn't see something that they can really say, wow, I love Coach for the value that he brings to the game of Survivor as well as the game of life. So um, it was a beautiful experience and I love connecting in that way. Genesis 49:27. Uh, Benjamin is a ravenous wolf. In the morning, he devours the prey, and in the evening, he divides the plunder. It's kind of a motto that I have wrapped around my arm in Hebrew, but it's also kind of a motto that um, I live by. I mean, I can be ruthless. You looked at it on Survivor. When somebody went against me, I cut them off. A soccer player that comes and plays for me, if they want to come there and smoke dope, and drink and party and do things that are subversively um, unedifying to the team, I will cut them ruthlessly. But if a guy comes and plays and is honorable and wants to be there as a team player, I will do anything for that player. At the same time, when I have a victory, I share the spoils. So where was the ravenous wolf at that last tribal council? The thing, what happened? No, the, the thing is, is that, you know, I, I wanted to come in penitent. I knew that I had not played a perfect game. I knew that I had hurt people along the way, people that I had loved and people that I had made to feel respected and appreciated. So I knew that they would be angry at me. But I always ask myself, what's the alternative? You know, what is the alternative? What they wanted and what I could have said to get an extra vote or two is I could have gone out there and said, you know what, guys, I played you. Man, I played you guys, I lied to you, I cheated, you know, I, I totally compromised my character. I don't give a rip about you guys. I trumpet all over you to get to the end. You wouldn't do that. You're much smoother than that. No, I mean, really, that's what they wanted to hear. You ask they, anybody. They you have ask... told us that if you had done that. Yeah, but why would I do that? Because I didn't do that. Did but, I? but not the way you just no, said but it. The thing is, but is if that... you had owned it. No, but I did own it. If you heard me. You apologized. Hmm. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, put, put me on the spot like that. Um, I, I really felt that, I, but I wouldn't change it because I felt like if I would have gone out there and owned it and just said, look, man, I mean, I walked over to you guys. I really didn't. Every, every person that got voted off that I cared about, it grieved me. I said that every time. So, you know. Well, you were playing a game. Your game was at a totally different level this time. It was, and I thought that they would see that, and I thought that they would appreciate that. And I know that when I saw people at the end, like Russell, sit up there and say, I owned you guys, nobody voted for him. And I didn't want to go into that final tribal displaying some type of I told you so, or I owned you, or any type of arrogance. I just wanted to come in humble and penitent. Maybe I should have owned it. Um, and it caused me many sleepless nights when I came back. But really, I didn't want to sit there and devalue everything that I've stood for the last 97 days by trying to get an extra vote from somebody. But you're proud of the way you played. It was your best game, right? Yeah, I'm very proud of the way I played. I wouldn't, I really wouldn't change a thing. And it's a great note to leave on. You know, I, I you know, everybody always asks, are you going to come back again? And I'm done. You know, I mean, I really am. I played it three different times, three unique approaches, succeeded, I think, every time at being a character, finding redemption and showing that I had a very sensitive side and coming back and saying, coach can actually play this game and outwit and outlast and outplay people. Why would I come back? Why would I come back in a game where the very first day people wanted to vote me out I changed their opinion all of a sudden people wanted to be coach they made me the leader every challenge I led them maybe in an underdog tribe to be neck and neck with some of the really best competitors that we've seen out there and we did it in a fashion that was honorable Cochran wanted to be coached a very real relationship came out of this game how many people really want to be coached out there and it was just so beautiful to get to the end and to play the game how I wanted to play. I think anything after this would cheapen the experience. It's like a relationship. If you have a great relationship, but it ends badly, your whole 
your whole memory of that relationship is kind of tarnished. This last time on Survivor was beautiful. I don't want to play again and go into another situation where I get on the wrong tribe or I'm with the wrong people, or I come in with the wrong attitude, or I'm just a returning player that's been there three times and gets a lot of airtime, and people are like, we want to see this guy go. Um, you know, it's like, I don't want to cheapen that. And I've got so many other things that are cooking, you know. I mean, February, uh, movie's coming out, you know, 180's going to be coming out. Um, I just heard that from the producers. Uh, even more exciting, you know, I'm going to have my own show this year, so you are going to see me back on television. We're going to film it uh, probably in the spring. It'll be out in the fall. What's it about? Um, I can't, obviously, I can't talk bit. about it. It's, Tease it. No, Tease it. You know, I mean, it's like, it's just, it's coach in a new light. It's, it's maybe the coach 4.0. You know what I like to do? I like to travel. I like to study other cultures. I like to take people under my wing. Uh, it's a concept that has not been done in this form. And so I'm totally excited about it. Outstanding. So, um, we know that Cochran voted for you. Do you know who the other two votes were? Yeah, I think it was Cochran, Edna, and Rick. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if you think, you know, you know I, I got to go back to your comment, though, about, you know, owning it or whatever, you know. It's like when people, are, you know, if you look at the individual votes, you know, maybe I would have gotten Ozzy's vote, you know. Um, but when people come onto the jury. Said you would. Yeah. But I mean, if, but, but the thing is, is that if Ozzy would have made it to the end as a returning player, I would have seen that he overcame more than other people. I mean, he hated Sophie. He thinks that she's a pretentious bitch. Um, and that's fine, you know, and maybe I would have gotten that vote. But here's the thing, right? People came out there, for the most part, with their minds made up. You look at Keith. Keith's question to me was, Dawn, she had checked out of the game. Whitney, you know, she's going to vote for Sophie because she didn't want to vote for me. Even though when she was in the game, I was the guy that she came up to that said, Coach, just tell me the truth because we know you're the person that's not going to lie out here. Am I going home tonight? No, Jim's going home. Don't worry about it. Next time. You know, am I going home tonight? And Dawn asked me the same thing. Next time, Dawn said, am I going home? I said, yeah, I'm sorry, you're going home. Whitney, you're not. You know, so, I mean, you know, for them to be poisoned by the jury members that later came off is something that's a flaw of Survivor. If they sequester the jury, nobody talks to each other, right? It would have been nine to nothing. Really? Look at, look at Keith's question. Coach, you have the hidden immunity idol. Was that for you or for the tribe? It was for the tribe. Really? Sophie? Albert? Yeah, it was for the tribe. Okay, Sophie, I'm going to write your name down. Really? That is rigged. When it comes to the final tribal, maybe one person's vote would have been swayed like Aussie's. Um, but again, he wanted me to just say, yeah, I freaking owned you, man. And I'm not going to say that. Because it was very real. The kind of, when I sat there and saw him hurt from previous people, it was a real moment. Every moment out there, look, you can say whatever you want to about me. I'm real and I'm genuine. And when I have those bonds with people out there, I seek that. I crave that in my regular life. I crave that on Survivor. If people want to turn that around and use that against me in the final hour, that's their karma, not mine. Well, I believe that. We went back and listened to some previous interviews with you, and I was very impressed. I was like, oh, I, I actually thought, I thought Coach really um, answers questions well and speaks well, so I actually really thought you were going to win. <laughs> and I so, too. Yeah. I too. Well, you played but, an amazing game. We enjoyed watching it, and congratulations. It's good to see another side of Coach. Yeah, absolutely. So thanks for that. Absolutely. We enjoyed it. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Good luck, coach.